Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and this week's video I just literally wanted to draw a ton of pink animals. So let's have a little sketching session and learn about pretty and pink animals I fill some sketchbook pages with. I was watching the Animal Planet as I do almost every night and there was a segment about Rosie at Spoonbills and I just thought they were so bizarre but kind of pretty with their vibrant pink plumage. Much like flamingos which is another animal I've talked about a lot in another video on my channel channel that I'll have linked below or a little side annotation here. But much like flamingos, Rosie at Spoonbills get their rich pink color from the food they eat that contains carotenoid like shrimp. These birds are close relatives to flamingos, but flamingos are much larger with longer necks. The bird I drew on the left is a more juvenile spoonbill and has less vibrant pinks and the one on the right is a more mature bird with much more rich pinks and yellow on the face and in the feathers. Something kind of cute I learned is that during mating season, the male will often gift nesting material to the females to impress them and once bonded, they are monogamous and take turns in caring for any offspring they create. The next pink animal I wanted to talk about is the Amazon River Dolphin or apparently commonly known as boat dolphins, but I've always just known them as those pink dolphins. These dolphins are the largest of freshwater dolphins and their pink color can actually vary depending on their age. When it is young, the Amazon River Dolphin is a dark gray on the upper portion of its body and as it matures, the gray is replaced by pink on the ventral and lower portion of the body, which spreads up the sides to the back. The color becomes lighter as the dolphin matures and ends up almost white with bits of bluish gray. Something unique about these dolphins is that instead of having a dorsal fin like other dolphins. They have a ridge on its back which rises to a modified hump shape at about the midsection of its body. Its flippers and flukes are unusually large and they are that way probably as an adaptation for maneuvering in shallow waters. Now let's talk about axolotls. Axolotls in the wild aren't actually even that white and pink that you see mostly in captivity. In fact, they're almost always a greenish brown or black in color. Although it is harder to find them in wild due to their limited environments that they live in. White axolotls are known as leucistic and descend from a mutant male that was shipped to Paris in 1863. They were then specially bred to be white with black eyes, which is different from albinos, which generally have red eyes. The little branches on their heads that I like to think are these cute little alien ears are actually the salamander's gills. Filaments attached to the long gills help increase the area for gas exchange. You may have heard that some amphibians are able to regenerate a lost tail, but axolotls take this to the next level. They can not only regenerate limbs, but they can also rebuild their jaw, spine, and even their brain without any scarring. Professor Stephanie Roy of University of Montreal explained to Scientific American, quote, you can cut the spinal cord, crush it, remove a segment, and it will regenerate. You can cut their limbs at any level, the wrist, the elbow, the upper arm, and it will regenerate. And it's perfect. There is nothing missing, there's no scarring on the skin at the site of amputation. Every tissue is replaced. They can regenerate the same limb 50, 60, 100 times, and every time, perfect, end quote. And that is just truly amazing to me. The last animal I wanted to talk about is the Major Mitchell's cockatoo. And this one was kind of a last minute addition to the sketching session. After seeing this really vibrant photo come across my Pinterest, after searching for all these pink animals, I just really enjoy how rich and vibrant that yellow and red feathers pop out when the bird fans out its crest like that. It's always amazing to me when I'm watching anything about birds of paradise, for example, and they look meh, and then they open their feathers or their wings in some way, and it's just a beautiful spectacle full of color. Most of the flashy colors and displays help them attract mates, and I'm sure it's impressive to their own species as well. I'll have a link to some information about these cockatoos in my description, along with all the sources I use for the other animals I talked about in this video. After drawing the cockatoo, I kind of lost steam and didn't really finish the body even, but honestly, I'm just happy I got to draw its head, which is the part I really want to study. I use my sketchbook as a way of exploring and putting these cool animals I learn about down on paper and I feel like when I get inspired and excited about something I just have to draw it. I've been doing that for as long as I can remember and I specifically remember coming home from the movies as a kid and being so inspired and just wanting to draw the characters I saw and just anything that I could get down to remember and explore it further. 
I think that's one of the beauties of having a sketchbook. My goal for these drawings was not to get a photorealistic likeness to the creature completely 100% accurate with the lighting and textures, but really just to have fun and loosely draw these animals that inspired me. I think it's important not to feel so much pressure to make amazing rendered drawings all the time. And just remember why you have a sketchbook, to sketch and explore. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I really do value the sketching process. And I would argue it's my favorite part. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me sketch these pretty pink animals. And if you did, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video every Friday and I would love to have you become a creative critter with me and come along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, leave a comment and let me know what your favorite color is. And maybe I'll do another video like this with animals of a different color. I love chatting with you guys in the comments and I respond to everything, so don't be shy. As always, I have links to all of my social media, including my website and Patreon that also has a lot of fun benefits like drawing animals for you guys, and my Pinterest that has boards of a collection of reference photos and inspiration I use to create drawings in my sketchbook. I also have affiliate links to the supplies I use in this video. If you're curious about anything I used and want to know more, plus help support this channel, consider looking at and using any of my affiliate links. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay creative, and I'll see you in next Friday's video. Fra, 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 fra.